Fantasy Strike is a game that's been on early access on Steam for a while now and is finally about to release. Created by David Serlin, who plays competitively at EVO, finishing in the top 8 three times and was also involved in Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix, does his vision of an accessible fighter with enough depth and strategy for pros come to fruition? I'm Glenn for SwitchUp, thank you to the developer for this review copy, and now, let's find out. In terms of the established rules of fighting games, Fantasy Strike mixes things up a little bit. You have a health bar and depleting your opponent's bar will end in a victory for that round, but the health bar itself is a little different. It's separated into chunks, with most characters having 6 chunks, although there are some that have as few as 5 and some have as many as 8. Most moves do one chunk of damage and a good combo can do as many as 3, meaning that rounds can be over pretty quickly. Another slight change is that instead of the more traditional best of three bouts, you need to win four rounds to win a match, meaning that matches can last for as many as seven rounds. This helps to compensate for how quickly rounds can be over in Fantasy Strike, and what I really appreciated about this was it felt much more like you were competing in a martial arts competition. As mentioned, Fantasy Strike aims to be a very accessible fighter for newcomers, and in some respects, it's a very simple game to play. All moves are performed by one button press and combo string together with a couple of presses. There is no crouch move, no dash or a run button and jumping is performed by pressing B, although you can change to a more traditional setup of using up on the D-pad should you wish. The challenge and the depth for more experienced players comes from making the right call in the heat of battle, as well as a few other features that we'll get to later. Each character has a normal attack move assigned to the Y button and two special attacks, one which is on the X button and one on the A button. What you can also do though is change the way you perform this special attack. For example, I used Grave for most of my initial playtime and one of his special attacks is a projectile move of a small thundercloud which you perform by pressing X. You can speed up or slow down the progression of the thundercloud by holding back or forward along with X or you can even hold X down for a larger but slower and much shorter ranged cloud. This is perfect when fighting against a strong grappling character that will do a lot of damage to you if they get in close as it allows you to keep them at arm's length. You can also call upon the element and then perform the projectile, powering it up this time. The game is simple to play in that you will never be scrabbling around trying to remember how to perform a special move with a deluge of back forward kick or quarter circle punch commands flashing through your mind, but the challenge lies in knowing when and how to execute all of these simple moves, and that's where the game really excels. Looking at this further, you have a super move, used by pressing L, which can be performed when your super meter is full, and a throw which is used by pressing R. Again though, as simple as these sound, there is a lot more depth to it. For example, attempt to throw a character whilst they are moving and you will be successful. However, attempt to throw them whilst they're standing still and they will perform what's called a Yomi counter move against you, causing you damage. If I go back to my example of fighting against a grappler from earlier, if they do manage to get through your defences, sometimes the best thing to do is nothing at all, as they may attempt to throw you, giving you a chance to counter. Blocking is another example. Block a move from your opponent and one chunk of your life bar will flash. Block a second move within a few seconds and it will flash faster. Block for a third time and you will lose that chunk of health. So blocking is simple, knowing when to block and when to attempt to fight your way out is the more difficult part. It's been said about many fighters over the years, but rarely has it rung as true as it does in Fantasy Strike, button mashing will get you nowhere. What I love most about Fantasy Strike though, is that it wants you to be good at it. In fact, it tries its best to teach you how to be good. I don't just mean by way of a tutorial or a practice mode, although it does have both of these features. I'm talking about the character videos and the frame advantage feature. Starting with the character videos, they talk you through all of each character's moves, giving you some hints as to how to use them most effectively, and they are narrated by game developer David Serlin. These videos are a great feature. I found them much more useful than tutorials. Even though you are watching rather than trying for yourself, they are so informative and the explanation of why to do certain things really does help make things click in your mind. Grave Sword Slash reaches far horizontally, and amazingly, it's totally invulnerable, like Dragon Punches in other fighting games. This gives it some incredible uses. Frame advantage is one of Fantasy Strike's major selling points if you look at the promotional material for the game, and it works by displaying, by way of a symbol above a character's head, which character will recover first after an attack. A blue circle means that you will recover first, and a red circle indicates that your opponent will. 
The bigger the circle, the quicker you will recover, or take to recover, depending on the colour. The bigger the frame advantage you have over your opponent, the more frames of animation per second you have to initiate an attack before them. Going into the practice mode will show you the frame data for each of your attacks. It really is quite amazing how the two ends of the scale have been catered for in terms of simplified controls for newcomers and frame data for experienced players. In terms of gameplay modes, you have a classic arcade ladder complete with an ending to unlock for each character. The ladder does only consist of six of the 10 characters each time and it would have been nice to have the option to fight the full 10 characters too, similar to how Mortal Kombat handles its arcade modes. There is a daily challenge mode which sees you attempting to clear as many enemies before you are defeated, a survival mode which works in a similar way, and a boss rush mode. There are also options to play team battles in local multiplayer, as well as the more traditional 1v1. Online play is available too. You will need to set up an account first, which just consists of a username and an email address, and you will then have access to casual play, ranked free versus free, or friend matches. Online was very smooth with no lag at all. The footage you are watching here, I actually recorded while playing in handheld mode sitting in my garden, and there were no interruptions at all. Oh, and yes, I did come back from three rounds down to win 4-3, with a perfect in the final round. In all seriousness though, online was a very positive experience. Gameplay receives 19 out of 20, whilst the controls also receive 19 out of 20. The character designs are all very different, all with a fantasy twist in some way. You have characters that can control the elements, control time, or use a magic paintbrush. And all of these traits are portrayed visually through the artwork. Some are more memorable than others, but to be fair, they all have enough personality about them to stand out and to make you want to try them all. The character models themselves use almost a hand-drawn style, and if I could sum it up in one word, it would be vibrant. The characters use a multitude of colours and a variety of backgrounds use a very interesting mix of settings. The game's art reminded me quite a bit of the art style from Street Fighter 4, and according to developer David Serlin, there is a link between the series when it comes to art. In an interview, the link to which I'll put down in the description, he stated that the characters' looks are all based on their first ever appearance before this game was in development, which was in a card battling game called Yomi, also created by Serlin, with art done by Udon Entertainment, who themselves have created art for Capcom's Street Fighter series in the past. Udon Entertainment also provided the artwork for the cutscenes that you'll find in this game's arcade mode. All characters have voice acting, which consists of a line of pre- and post-fight dialogue, as well as battle cries mid-match. These are okay, a little bit cheesy at times, and they do not quite match the standard of the art, at least in my opinion. All cutscenes are fully voiced in arcade mode, as well as the character videos being narrated as mentioned earlier. The music is generally appropriate for the mood of the stage, with an oriental theme being most prominent throughout. Visuals receive 18 out of 20, whilst the audio receives 16 out of 20. Fantasy Strike costs £28.99, $29.99 or €32.99 and for this price you are getting a game that's accessible but with that extra depth needed to give a fighting game some legs. With an arcade mode, daily challenges and a few other modes, as well as both local and online multiplayer, there's certainly a fair bit to do. Although a character roster of 10 is a little bit small, the production values certainly do warrant the price. There is no word of a physical copy of this game as of this time, and value gets 16 out of 20. To conclude, Fantasy Strike is a fantastic fighting game that has something to offer to just about everyone. The controls are simple enough for newcomers to use, yet there is enough depth for fighting veterans to enjoy, and personally, I loved the best of seven quick rounds as it really added a sense of urgency to the more methodical nature of the gameplay. With a decent arcade mode and a very robust online, this could last you a while. Unless you are someone that sees the mapping of a special move to just one button in a fighting game as sacrilege, there really is no reason not to grab this one. Fantasy Strike gets a switch up score of 88%. Many thanks as always everybody for watching, please do remember to leave a like if you like what you've just seen. We really do have some fantastic fighting games on the Switch now, 
and I think a top 10 fighting games video is certainly in order in the near future. A quick thank you as always to our Patreons for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. We've just hit that 40,000 mark, which is absolutely fantastic. And reading the positive comments left on our community page the other day when we did hit that landmark was truly humbling. So thank you very much to everyone that commented on there. Anyway, take care and until next time, happy gaming.